Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Orcherton. I reside in Victoria. I have done so for nearly 70 years, 42 of which in our family home at 2653-55 Cedar Hill Road, a duplex in a duplex R2 zone neighborhood. I've served this community in elected roles, both provincially as the MLA for Victoria. I've served on community boards, both public and private, and with numerous agencies and commissions. This middle, missing middle proposal is a profound change in community planning and zoning, and in real terms is a blanket zoning change to residential neighborhoods. I am extremely concerned about this, and that is why I'm here today. I do not support this initiative that is being brought forward by this council. I am disheartened, disgusted, and profoundly disappointed by this initiative and other collective actions you have taken. I find myself no longer having faith or trust in this council. I have substantial experience in governance, and I do recognize from experience that change is a constant, and there are always unintended consequences in decision-making. That is why change needs to be a slow and thoughtful process, not knee-jerk flavor of the day change. This council has a record of flavor of the day policies, and today is marketing this zoning change with the catchphrase missing middle initiative leading many to equate this somehow with housing affordability for the middle class. Managing down risk and decision making and recognizing that all decisions have unintended consequences is a key responsibility of local government. Key to leadership and this council has repeatedly failed in this regard. If adopted, this proposal negates any input from citizens as individuals and negates the work of community associations regarding community planning and zoning in neighbourhoods. This missing middle notion clearly would abrogate the responsibility of elected councillors to represent citizens and community needs and would delegate un unilateral authority to staff in the city with no recourse for or no notice to residents or neighbourhoods. We have seen in recent times heavy densification of our downtown core. Numerous large high-rises, condos, and more are being built as we speak. If this proposal goes ahead, we will see heavy densification in our traditional residential neighbourhoods. And let me tell you, densification has already occurred and continues to occur. Our street has duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, and a myriad of basement suites, garden suites, and R1S1 zoning. And we are no different than most traditional residential neighbourhoods in Victoria. Clearly, Council does not know or understand how much residential infilling has occurred under co current zoning. So why do this? And who really benefits at the end? Not the community, not citizens, but developers, speculators and others who will make profits while densifying our neighbourhoods, all in the guise of providing housing for the so-called missing middle. Let me be crystal clear here. The pro proliferation of downtown condos in high rises are today marketing for $700,000 to well over a million and a half dollars plus. These are not affordable by any standards, nor will residential densification be. With the cost for townhouses, will the cost for townhouses and shared strata ownership be more expensive than condos? Of course it will. Ordinary people and families can't afford the condos now. They work in Victoria but can't live here. The Council's Council gives little thought to managing down risks in decision making and looking at unintended consequences of Council's decisions. On policing and crime, homeless issues, Clover Point, Beacon Hill Park, bike lane Im implementation, reconciliation, traffic control, road maintenance, density and building heights in the core and on and on it goes. Consider the coming future and how this council will respond to consequences that arise should this blanket zoning change move forward and density increase. What about future pandemic responses? Healthcare, we don't have enough doctors for people now. Police, fire and ambulance, bylaw services cannot even meet residents' needs today. Environmental and climate change, we cut down more trees, pour more concrete and shading of neighbours. Water usage, sewage and waste disposal. The risks here are enormous. The unintended consequences are self-evident, and this missing middle initiative will do nothing to assist those who need a home in our community. I see two options for you. Table this proposal, or the preferred option, vote to stop the process, period. Please, I urge you to stop this process. The risks have not been managed, the unintended consequences are too great, and the damage to our city and neighbourhoods will be irreversible. Just stop. Just stop. 
and in the dying days of your mandate, focus on addressing the unintended consequences you have already created and visited upon our community and try and manage Thanks. those risks down. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh,